welcome you all on behalf of the 14th edition of dialogues calcutta international lgbtqia plus film and video festival organized by safo for equality prutta gender trust and the good institute max villa bhavan kolkata we started the journey of dialogues 13 years ago as one of the early independent film festival then dedicated to the politics of lgbtqia plus and other marginal uh, exist existence we started small we were naive then today when we reflect on this journey hosting the 14th edition of dialogues in 2020 we take pride reflecting back and celebrating the evolution that we have gone through over the past decade and a half the idea of dialogue was to literally and figuratively generate more conversations and make more noise around celebrating our existence our rights our as individuals and as a collective to represent larger communities uh I remember we hosted the first 10 editions at the auditorium of the Goethe Institute Max Miller Bhavan Kolkata at Baligan Circular Road but as our viewership increased considerably through the years the festival then moved to Boshu Street Cinema the centrally located in a historic single screen theater in Kolkata both the venues over the years have only been extremely hospitable and accessible to who and participate in the festival it did create a dent in the rubric of the city and has led to larger conversations collectively it became the space where filmmakers film viewers artists activists and seekers came together and spoke about what we were conditioned to overlook that this evidently of course made dialogues the vibrant and a visible platform in 2020 with the same intent spirit and motivation we go digital and hence expand our viewership and uh, expand the participation to pan india dialogues uh, could not have been possible without the three partners working together in perfect tandem with the same synergy and most importantly the will that's what uplifts the spirit of the festival the preparatory work and the back end work is always a party for us where you lose the sense of time and somehow acquire this unlimited energy to put this festival together in the best way possible so i will now invite malavika from safo for equality to come forward and share a few words wait she is the anxious mother of the festival for sure malavika di namaskar it's really very strange to be sitting over here at our work station and addressing social our, our special dignitaries our allies and our friends for dialogues calcutta international lgbtqia plus film and video festival 2020 after all physical proximity does matter as shurmisha said that in 2007 we started dialogue in goth institute max funder bhavan kolkata then calcutta with an objective to reach out to the maximum number of people of the larger society to provide safe space to our community people and at the same time to reduce the gap to bridge the gap rather between community and non community people at that time there was hardly any scope to generate such a dialogue we thought one of the ways of opening a dialogue could be true film festival das dialogue calcutta international lgbt qia plus film and video festival 2007 flagged its journey in 
Calcutta in India. Yes, dear friends. Dialogues is the largest, longest rather, longest running LGBT film festival in India. In 2017, we, the team of Dialogues, decided to step out from the four walls of Max Miller Bhavan. You know, I mean, it was dared, you know, and dared to make this public event literally public by organizing it in a single screen movie hall, Bashu Street. That also been said by Shurmishta. And that is with 750 seating capacity. Previously in Max Muller, it was 220 seating capacity. Friends, this has happened much more earlier the, of 6th of September, 2018, yes. At that time also, we didn't think of ourselves as criminals. We all know that the COVID-19 virus has shattered India's economy. Though economic growth was slowing down even before the pandemic. In West Bengal, due to the twin impacts of COVID-19 pandemic and the uh, Amphan disaster, along with other underprivileged persons, people from our community have also been largely affected. Most of them are suffering without any means for livelihood and sustenance. But even during this time, most interestingly, parents made arrangements to get married their lesbian daughters. We could stop only two such cases. And that also, they could reach out to us but what about those people who couldn't? Even in 2020, conversion therapy is rampant. In spite of reading down IPC 377, across India, people have become moral police. Police has become moral police. People have become moral police most in most part of India. Police have played an active role in a number of atrocities, be it in the name of love jihad, be it against the Dalits, and be it against the religious and gender sexual minorities. Our state believes in monologue, not dialogue, but we believe in continuing the dialogue. And it is our conviction that films can be the seeds for a continuous dialogue. Meaningful films have the power to give birth to infinite possibilities in the midst of implausible time. Some of us have felt compelled to familiarize ourselves with the virtual world, despite its numerous challenges and risks. And yet, this online medium brings together more and more people in dialogue. More people from different states and territories shall use this opportunity to congregate and find reflections of their life journeys as well as witness others. So friends, hang on with us. Let dialogues carry on. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Malavika Di. Uh, the inherent part of this partnership uh, for a long time has been the Goethe Institute Max Miller Bhavan Kolkata because of the belief and the Institute's firm focus on providing a neutral platform for cultural exchange. We are very happy to introduce and invite our very, very new director, uh, of the Great Institute Max Miller Bhavan Kolkata from Astrid Vege to come forward and say a few words. Mention must be made of our former director, Friso Mecca, who has stood strong behind the development of this festival. But we are very fortunate and lucky to have a wonderful person like Frau Vege, who has the same passion 
and the same enthusiasm. Herzlich willkommen, Frau Wege. Vielen Dank. Thank you very much. I'm indeed very, very happy to be participate in this opening of uh, Dialogues Film Festival. Um, the main goal of Goethe Institute is, or one of the main goals of Goethe Institute is exactly to create spaces for encounters to bring different perspectives and voices um, into exchange to be a platform for that. And also, or especially for um, views, perspectives and voices which are considered minoritarian and to make them less minoritarian actually. And Calcutta International LGBTQIA plus film and video film F festival 2020 dialogues does exactly that. It brings together people from all over the world, writers, directors, actors, um, producers, and of course, interested people and the community. And um, it also does it by showing films from all over the world. And uh, as it was already mentioned, film is a very good medium to get into dialogue, to get into exchange, to exchange ideas and views. As already men mentioned also, um, Goethe Institute, Max Müller, Bavan, Calcutta has been actively supporting the festival for a long time. And um, I'm very, very happy that uh, we will actually continue our longstanding commitment with our esteemed partners also, also in 2020 and I hope many more years. Um, the festival will take place online this year, so I'm quite sure that direct encounters will be missing, but at the same time, maybe the festival can also increase its outreach and maybe even also geographically include more people. This is at least what we hope we will exceed, uh, succeed or. The festival um, combines fiction and documentary feature films, but it also includes, and I'm very happy about that, a package of short films. And these short films will be presented and have been created by the director of the International Short Film Festival in Hamburg, Maike Mia Höhne, who will also present today in the session. Um, at this point, I would like to thank our partners, Sappho for Equality and Patia Gender Trust. And of course, I would like to thank all participating filmmakers, producers, distributors, all, all people, all members of the teams in the background who make this festival possible. Thank you so much. I wish the festival great success, many, many spectators and uh, a lot of interesting discussions and exchange. Thank you so much. Thank you, Frau Wege. The third, third partner is Pro Gender Trust, and I invite Onindo Hajra to share a few words with uh, you now. Onindo, I have to say, is the real diva of this festival. Without her diva tantrums, it is just impossible for us to work towards achieving the best. Here you are, the diva of the festival, Onindo Hajra. Um, thank you, Shermishta. Thank you, uh, everyone who has made this festival space possible for us to speak. Um, I speak with you wanting to foreground some of the discomfort that many queer persons and trans persons are trying to voice in current times. I share the discomfort and additionally resonate with the foreboding sense of danger. The upsurge of divisive voices have multiplied so much around us in this country that I now strongly feel that it isn't enough to be just queer. A euphemism or a catch-all phrase for LGBT, but wasn't it supposed to be a lot more? In times we are living in, what is going to be the queer response to a queer claim that is casteist or privileges tropes of a supposed queer being, such as a upper caste Savarna pride. How are we going to deal with the sexism and misogyny against queer cis women, let alone trans misogyny? What happens when homos chant go back to Pakistan or Bangladesh to fellow queer Muslims, threatening them 
of taking away their citizenship using dangerous laws that have been framed by lawmakers in this country. What happens when queer folks say that they will actively campaign for a certain temple to be built on a historically volatile site? When pogroms against minorities are supported? When speech is muzzled in pride marches because pride apparently is not a political space or a political issue? So what are we expected to do? Paint our face in rainbow? colors and eat rainbow popcorn to photograph ourselves for our IG handles? What happens when trans queer persons are dead named by prominent homo saviors and their details are handed over to investigative authorities for them having apparently given anti-national slogans? How does pride evangelism work, stomping out all the diversity and richness from our lives, bulldozing over our realities? Is diversity and inclusion the buzzword that corporate India and its HR machinery has learned to now use in a manner to foil and cloak the broader structures of exclusion? Do we not exist in a complex matrix of not only our sexual orientation alone or gender identity for that matter, but caste, class, gender orientation and the lived experiences of those? How does, say, a tribal trans person who is a forest dweller deal with her land being given away to a corporate? Is participating in pride her only salvation to prove her allegiance to her queer self? Today, I don't see how we can create our own happy bubbles and not see these things from this and similar perspectives. I say this, since Dialogues was born at a historical moment while returning from Nondigram in the tumultuous 2007 in Bengal. It was a volatile space. Today, there is a perceived danger to reduce our queer expression and lives to just posing in front of cameras and eating rainbow cupcakes. By that, are we contributing to the erasures already around us and what is a greater danger, that of appropriation of our histories and our struggles. With notions of touch, intimacy, space, breath, and being having undergone a sea change, we hope the intensity of forging connections, despite these newfound barriers, isn't diminished. That we are able to formulate newer languages of expressions and inspiring possibilities Mindful, however, of the margins that exist, exclusions that get deepened, and of our own privileges, never perhaps being marked on a scale such as this ever before. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Anindu, for those points. And indeed, it is the bitter truth. Well, it is time now to screen our signature film for the festival. So this year we followed a different process of deciding who would be the creator of the film. We chose the filmmaker through an open call for application, asking the festival question, are we having the right dialogue? And we received some incredible responses. The ideas that came to us were truly wonderful and praiseworthy. And we had a tough time choosing who would make the film. But who we chose is an amazingly talented person and who made a very unique signature film for us this year. I think the imprints of this film will remain with us for a long time to come. It is a stop motion animation film. Now let's watch the film.
I hope we can hear. I mean, I wish we could hear some virtual clapping. I would encourage all of you to make some noise to cheer for the film that you have just watched. May I now introduce the amazing filmmaker Asha Singh from Bombay who made this film. Two lines about Asha. Asha is a graphic designer and illustrator. As an independent woman in a fast developing nation, her thoughts are often conflicted whether her action and impact the different people around her. The society and the environment as a whole or if she's just a speck of dust in a bigger picture of things and does not matter at all. In her spare time, she illustrates and creates comics for long lost causes. I'm sure she makes a difference, Isha. Introducing Isha to you all. Isha, do you want to say a few words? Hello, thank you. Thank you for having me here. I am honored and I think I'm not the only one who is uh, literally clapping after each. Uh, I'm clapping to my screen and I'm on mute, and, uh, but uh, I'm really honored to be a part of this panel and uh, all the speeches you've given are just such an eye opener for me. And uh, yes, I'm thankful for Dialogues for this opportunity to be able to work on a movie like this, which is uh, a quick one, but also to be able to express uh, the way I feel about the way uh, our media operates right now. And there is so much uh, polarization in, in terms of how we see right and wrong. And if we were just a little more inclusive about, uh, just a little more inclusive about more opinions and more stories, it would make such a huge difference. Thank you very much, uh, Isha. Uh, you really made a difference, believe me. And Thank I you. hope you keep on making a difference through your uh, mode of expression. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. Pleasure, indeed. Um, this year, the program is more close to our hearts because we have two very special guests with us. Really, really special for this festival because they have very silently contributed their bit to the festival and have never come in the forefront. Their support has been a great strength for all of us. May I mention Maike Mirhyone from Hamburg, Germany and Shonja Nag from Kolkata, India. Both of them have been behind this festival for a very, very long time. We will start with inviting Shonja Nag to say a few words and also do a very special surprise announcement that we have planned for the future editions of the festival. Before uh, he comes on screen, a few words about him. I'm afraid it can't be few words because he's quite well known and has done a considerable body of work. Shonja Nag from Kolkata started out with documentaries before branching out to feature films. His debut feature film, Memories in March, starring Ritu Porno Ghosh, Raima Sen, and Dipti Nawal, won him the national award in 2010 and was world premiered at the new current section of Busan International Film Festival. And was also screened widely across the globe in several international festivals. Parapar, in 2014, based on a Moti Nundi novel was his sophomore feature. His Hindi feature, Yours Truly, had its world premiere again at the Busan International Film Festival in 2018 and is being currently screened at the festivals across the world and also streaming on Z5. I would recommend you to catch it if you haven't watched it already. It recently won the Best uh, Digital Film Award at the Dada Sahib Falke International Film Festival, 2020. He is awaiting the release of his Hindi feature, Good Morning Sunshine. His concept for a film, Mujhe Jaan Na Kaho Meri Jaan, was selected for the Asian Projects Market, Busan International Film Festival, 2016. An obsessive foodie and traveler, he dons and grease paints only for exciting roles, playing Rabindranath Tagore in Ritu Porna Ghosh's last completed film, Jeevan Shmiti, uh, Selective Memories was one such thing. So 
Here we are. Shonjada, can you come on screen and say a few words? Yeah, hi, Shomisha. Thank you so much uh, for that brilliant introduction. Uh, I'm very happy and uh, glad that the dialogue is back again because in this year of pandemic, uh, most of the film festivals are either going online and they're getting curtailed, some are getting postponed. So I'm really, very happy that uh, dialogue is back. And dialogue has been, I mean, I've been going to dialogue for a long time now. My first film, maybe was in March. The screen there, I think, in 2010. So it's been almost a 10 year journey with uh, dialogues. And it's been a window for me, you know, to a world of extremely beautiful, curated cinema, uh, conforming to performance coming on from this community, which normally I would have missed because these films are not easy to come by. You don't get to see them on OTTs or other platforms or even otherwise. So, yes, I mean, I always look forward to them. I mean, this is Dialogues has now become a very important part of my winter calendar, if I can say so. And uh, I know it's very easy to say the film festival has gone online, but I also appreciate the amount of effort the entire team, from Ishtar Indo, everybody, everybody involved with dialogues this year, because it's not easy to create a, uh, a website and have films uh, screened from their life. So yes, I'm looking forward to this next three, three and a half days of uh, interesting films and uh, can catch up as I'll try and catch up as many films as possible and uh, of course there's no alternative to watching a film for a film of my might like me on the big screen but uh, this year has been different and also what I will miss and this is something which again the entire dialogue team done wonderfully well is kind of sinking the venue wherever the festival was, be it the old Max Miller or be it Moses Street, with the theme of the festival. I mean, last year, I remember the beautiful art installations that were uh, put up at Moses Street, which is an iconic single screen theater in the south, southern part of Kolkata. So yes, I will miss that. But again, I mean, this year, on the other end, on the flip side, we are going global. I mean, since it's an online festival, anywhere, you know, wherever you are, uh, you can kind of log into their website and register and watch the film. And uh, what makes me even more happier is uh, I've been kind of pestering on Indo Shomish to everybody for this to kind of, uh, if we could kind of take this route, and it's actually going to happen from 2021 next year, the next edition of Dialogues, it will also have a competitive section. So, which is something I'm looking forward to because uh, a competitive section in a film festival also brings you new films, you get to see a lot of premieres. Uh, Films that will be produced just before the festival. So, yes, I'm still kind of hopeful that next year we'll have a uh, festival, probably an off site or an on site festival, and we will have a uh, competitive section as well. I'm sure the details of that will be rolled out in the course of the year. But till then, uh, all the best to the team, and I wish the dialogues 2020 all the best. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Shandita. So there you are, the surprise announcement. The details and the criteria will be soon announced on our website. So please keep watching and we will await many, many interesting entries. And don't worry, there's definitely going to be a prize. I now invite Mikey Mierhöne from Germany to come forward and share a few words and declare the festival formally open. Well, she has to just say it since there's no other way. Uh, a few lines about Maike. Maike Mierhöne studied visual communication at the University of Fine Arts, Hamburg, Havana, and then studied uh, uh, next in Havana in Cuba. After her stays in Buenos Aires, Argentina, she completed her postgraduate studies at the University of Fine Arts, Hamburg, with a focus on films. She works as a curator, a juror for several institutions and festivals worldwide and is involved in film funding on a regional and a national level. From 2007 to 2019, she was the head of Berlinale Shorts of the Berlinale International Film Festival. Maike is a professor for film at the University of Applied Sciences Europe in Hamburg she also teaches film theory and making at the University of 
Fine Arts in Hamburg. Since March 2019, she has been the artistic director of the Hamburg Short Film Festival. So here you are, Michael Mirajone. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me. And uh, just to mention, I'm a mother too of two wonderful kids and you know, it's, it's far more. Thank you so much uh, for inviting me. It's a great honor for me and it's a very special day for me today. And I'm um, being part of the opening makes it even more special. I want to start with uh, Paul Preciado, one of the most important contemporary writers and thinkers on gender and sexuality. He says the say, they say identity, we say multiplicity. They say crisis and we say revolution. Preciado understood through his own being on the fragile situation of being a political and a personal person in the same moment. He insists that we live in a neoliberal fiction of thinking that we believe we are the owners of ourselves, of our bodies, we are not. Economics and politics intervene again and again and don't let us be the way we want to live our own private life. The womb is the organ in which it all comes together. Political interest and disappropriation. We can see, especially at the moment uh, in Poland, Argentina, the fighting, far more countries besides. We need queer responses and solidarity to stop this reality, to create a new and free, many free realities, a full world of diversity and diversities. We need dialogue. My first film was screened at a film festival and it was the lesbian and gay film festival in Hamburg where it played and at the Rainbow Film Festival. No other festival by then, but these two festivals and they really marked my way into this world. I was very impressed and uh, mostly I was impressed by the presence of the difference of the other of uh, the many reflected on screen through a variety of films, very different aesthetic positions from fiction to this so-called experimental film. And I immediately felt at home and I still feel at home. During my time at Berlinale and the experience and screening we had with all the Teddy films, the award for the best queer film, the importance, I felt the importance of including such an award at such an important film festival as the Berlinale as an A film festival is from the very beginning of the 1990 years to today, an award for the best queer film in fictional feature film in documentary film and in short film. And from there, from Berlin, it goes out into the world because so many programmers and filmmakers come to the festival to grab and to feel the community. And that is such an important moment the Goethe Institute always was and still is and will always be, hopefully, an important partner in sending out all these films into the world and make them part of other people's lives. And this is something I really would like to thank you, the Goethe Institute now with you represented here forever because it is so, so important and makes so much possible. Exploding Butts, this year's short film program for Dialogues is a program of four films that reflect the inner world and the grow of a community that is still in danger, not only as we just heard here, but you know, many places in the world, you all know this. And uh, it is to simply live the way one wants to live, which is the most important thing to, to live. So Baby Dyke, Longevity and Destiny Deluxe all approach the wonderful self from very different perspectives, being queer is such a wild and unexpected view onto the world, which has always been reflected in these films. They embrace the world. Being trans, queer, gay was a reason to disappear in Argentina in the 1990s and is, uh, in the 1970s, 80s, and still is difficult. So the film Ensayo de una despedida won the Teddy Award this year at the Berlinale for the best short and represents like the core of this program of short films. Embracing means to be part of someone else's moment. 
And it's all about precious moments that we together share. So sharing these films and ideas and programs with you over the years also means for me to be part of your moments. And that's what I love. It's a present. Thank you very much. And um, I wish you a wonderful festival, which hereby I want to take I want to declare to be open. Feeling, feeling dank, Maike. Well, uh, thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, all you. our guests. Thank you, all our guests uh, who are attending this program. Thank you, all our speakers. Thank you, Malubika, Anindu, Frau Wege, Maike, Shonjada, uh, who joined us uh, this evening. A big thank you goes out to all the partners of the festival. And of course, a big, big cheer for the whole Dialogues team, who I will try to show you. They are sitting here. Oh. And, this is, and this is our Dialogues team and technical base, which is very generously given to us by Dev and Neil. They have also been an integral part of this festival and have been very, very generous with all their ideas and uh, of course the generous, uh, generous contribution, which uh, this is their warehouse actually. Uh, so we have 37 films from 20 countries. We have six very, very interesting programs, including the session for young adults in partnership with Pink Arts. So go for it, everyone. Enjoy the festival. I know we'll miss the chai, the outside the, you know, Boshu Street Cinema, or we'll miss the Fuchka outside the Bali and Circular Road, Great Institute. But we will definitely uh, have it next year, I'm sure. And we will see each other, embrace each other again. Let's look forward positively uh, towards the next edition of uh, the Dialogues Film Festival. Uh, I would say, just go and log in and enjoy the films. They're great films this year. So happy viewing, everybody. And yeah, see you next year for sure. Bye-bye. <laughs>